Uh, there's my red light right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Which means it is time to begin. Hey, hey, welcome back, everybody. Hey, we got a rare treat. Uh, we got a rare treat going on today. We are all back together. I mean, it was it was awesome in the early days of doing this. Uh, chapters one, scientific method. Chapters two, that chemistry uh, chapter, which was uh, man, that was quite a bit. And then three, the organ no, the macromolecules. And then four, the organelles. Uh, these are the biology chapters. They're, they're not necessarily the numbers for A and P. Sorry about that. And uh, then. I think that's when we split because uh, then after that bio went to plasma membrane and uh, A&P went to human tissue which is a great chapter love that chapter but here we are we're all back together again for cellular respiration uh, so hey welcome uh, A&P students whether you're at uh, Nevada High School or you're at the uh, Crowder College and welcome bio students whether again whether you're at crowder or you're at the high school man it's great to have us all back together studying the the, the same thing one it just makes it easier on, on the old man here but uh two it's just uh, great to uh, to get us all back together in the metaphorical or virtual same room about virtual that's a that's a that's a strong word right there that may be a good teacher move a strong teacher move there i don't know using the word virtual probably not saying it right though virtual virtual is probably what I should say but hey welcome thank you for uh, tuning this in uh, getting this thing going again uh, just appreciate you guys doing that love you guys as you know and uh, appreciate you taking me along on your educational journey I mean some of us had to be together a lot at the high school and at Crowder, we get our nights uh, together, evenings together. But, uh, man, it's just great to, to be around all you guys and, and love what I'm doing, love you guys. And uh, so, hey, man, we got a great topic, cellular respiration. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that when you're talking about what our bodies do. I know I, I say this a bunch, and you guys hear it a bunch, but uh, what, our, what our cells do, what our body does to... Uh, to make us an efficient machine is unbelievable and uh, phenomenal and it's just it's just incredible to, to read about to study and all without us thinking about it man we don't even have to think about uh, breaking down that sandwich we had for lunch or that pizza last night or or in my case man last night I know A and P. You heard about this when we did uh, when I did uh, what we do yesterday. Oh, bones. Yeah, part two and part three of the bones. But had, had us a good dinner. I had dinner last night. Breakfast for dinner, uh, and we got the waffle iron out and, and we cooked us up some waffles. And then I make a I make some mean waffles. Uh, nice, light, fluffy, sweet. A little bit of. Uh, yeah, they're great stuff. And then we, we ground up some uh, pork butt, made some breakfast sausage. Man, that was fantastic. But anyway, that's enough about all that. But what we're going to talk about today is what, uh, after eating it last night, what my cells started to do with it uh, you know, almost immediately. Uh, certainly by now, it's, it's uh, as you can see, it's uh, 1030 the next day. So certainly by now, that process has gone well underway. Uh, but just the cool stuff going on. You can see from the diagram, there's a lot going on uh, over here. This is the whole cycle right here, what happened to photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And unfortunately, the A&P people, you don't get to hear that talk about photosynthesis. And speaking of A&P and uh, not being around for everything, there are a few times I'm going to have to just kind of stop and relay a metaphor or replay a metaphor, redo a metaphor, uh, just to make sure the A&P people... Uh, understand what I'm talking about because I'm going to talk about them. It's some things we did in, in uh, chapter six, the energy uh, process, and everybody else will understand what I'm talking about. But I got to make sure that I uh, just mention that uh, hey, this is a previously mentioned metaphor and uh, explain it in a little bit, kind of a little review. But you can see that uh, as we go through this process, we're, we're going to be moving through 
the mitochondria and it's the mitochondria right here spoiler alert and uh, this whole this whole process and of course down here we got the we got the famous electron transport chain which is an unbelievable process and I love talking about uh, I love talking to me some ETC uh, so we'll get to that but it all starts right here with this cycle and once and uh, once we get started here, that's where we're going to start the, the conversation. The rest of these are just showing off that I can bring in some images about uh, what we're going to be talking about. That's a strong teacher move there, showing off, yeah, with uh, with images. I mean, I I uh, pulled up a Google page. I did a search. I did a copy. I did a paste. I mean, I did a lot of stuff right there. And so that's a, those are all strong teacher moves right there. So with that, hey, let's get started. And again, thank you for being here. And again, as always, man, I hope everybody's okay. I hope everybody's doing well, mentally, physically, emotionally. Hope you're in a good spot. Uh, if not, hey, be sure you take care of that. I know even uh, uh, even me, even though I love what I'm doing, you know, sometimes you just gotta take a little moment for yourself and uh, and uh, just take a take a little take a little break, get a little breather. But again, hope your families are doing well and everything. Um, it's interesting always when I think about the timelines. I mean, uh, uh, bio, the Crowder people, you'll see this uh, right at the end of the, um, well, towards the end. Not so much, well, I know A and P is towards the end. It's like it's your last chapter we do. And, uh, of course, the Crowder bio people, this is uh, about the 60% mark. So you'll see this in a couple of weeks. And Crowder in uh, late November. Uh, in the high school, this is this will be your next to last. I mean, you're going to be seeing this in in uh, what March probably, yeah, March, and then April will be photosynthesis, and then uh, we'll start to wrap it up. So by that time, uh, all this stuff hopefully will be pretty good eye down. But anyway, I'm rambling now, so let me get let me get going. As always, got a little glass of water here. Although it's pretty low, I should have filled it up before I got this started. It's too late now. It would not be a strong teacher move to get up and go fill the uh, water glass while you guys just sit there and watch the uh, video roll to an empty screen. Although you get to see some pretty good stuff. You get to see all the back wall stuff back there that you guys don't get to see there. But uh, World Series banners and Super and World and uh, Super Bowl banners and all that stuff that's back there. Just a collection of birthday items and Christmas items. I mean, I'm an easy guy to, to buy for where whoever the family member is. Uh, they just throw a cheap thing at me and royal thing at me or an OU thing at me and call her good, which is which is fine by me. It's not about me anymore. Um, so, hey, oh, and I got my notes here. So we're, we're ready to go. So let's get this going here. I'm taking up way too much. That's a long introduction right there. All right, so let me get a little pen here. And let's see, photosynthesis, cell respiration, what would be a good color? I know when obviously with photosynthesis, the obviously color would be green, uh, but I use red way too much. Let's let's pick something different here. Let's see. I wanted to grab the rainbow over here, but it's not a holiday. Uh, that's a that's a pretty special color, right there. So let's go with. You know what let's do it let's just use the rainbow pen it's uh, every day is a celebration in, in, in my world so let's use the rainbow pen so let me see what it, let me see what it looks like oh yeah that's what I'm talking about right there all right so here we go so cellular respiration the breakdown of the foods we eat okay of the foods we eat and this cycle is so cool I mean it is unbelievable cycle the fact that Things that we get rid of that we consider waste, okay, right here. Well, we don't consider water waste, but we, but certainly this bad boy right here, carbon dioxide, we gotta get that thing out. That thing's uh, dangerous to us. What we consider dangerous and a waste products, man, you know who gobbles them up? The plants do. Man, they take that carbon dioxide, and they're like they're licking their chops to get that stuff. Because uh, then they can break that down. They can use that uh, to make some pretty good stuff. And of course, then the plants take that stuff and then they make their uh, sugars, which is right there. That's the old glucose molecule. Uh, when we get to photosynthesis, man, we talk about glucose a lot. 
Uh, and of course, their waste product they give up right there, oxygen. They're like, man, get that stuff out of here. And guess what? We're ready to gobble that up. Okay, we're ready to take in as much of that as we can. So that's the cool factor. Uh, these cycles just play into each other. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome. And those waste products that we're giving out, each of us are giving out. The other, the other group is just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me have, let me have some of that. All right, so let's close this out, and I believe we're supposed to move down. That's right. There's my pictures right there. All right, so we got to set the stage for who we're talking about here. So let me get a little text box here. Slide that over here. All right, so the cast for our uh, for our podcast here. We're going to start with because the zebra's on top. Heterotrophs. Hopefully, you're familiar with that word. Uh, if you are a high school student currently or a recent graduate, hopefully somewhere along the way in your life science years in middle school, your biology years, you certainly should have heard about it then. But heterotrophs, uh, these are... Uh, let's just go with organisms. Organisms and I'm gonna have to obviously move that. So we'll just move it down. There we go. That'll work right there. They gotta eat to get energy. Okay, they've gotta eat stuff and that's us. Okay, spoiler alert, that's us. And our second uh, cast member, the autotrophs. Oh, not that one. No, right over. Well, oh, I really butchered that. There we go. The autotrophs. These are organisms that can produce. Produce sugars for energy, and uh, one of the funny little—I uh, don't know if "funny" is the right word—but one of the little mental blocks that some students uh, from teaching, you know, the regular biology class, the EOC biology class, sometimes when you think if you when you use the phrase "make food," that's why I use sugars, and I don't use the word "food" anymore. Uh, make sugars. Sometimes if you say, "Hey," Autotrophs are organisms that make food. Well, you'll get that high school student that has that little mental uh, information gap uh, because they're thinking, "Well, I can go in the kitchen and make food all the time." And uh, but we're not—that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about from a chemical organizational standpoint at the cellular level. Uh, autotrophs, the plants, aka the plants, uh, can produce sugars uh, used for energy. So I, don't, so I don't say the word food anymore or make. Yeah, besides, produces a, a better science word, which is a strong teacher move to use to use better science words. So that's our cast right there, and and actually, I'm just going to move that all the way down to there because I need this space right here. So now, thinking back to six, and of course, this is where uh, A and P, uh, you were not involved uh, in our conversation. And I'm going to reach over here. This is not a strong teacher move. My phone is done charging, so I'm just going to take the charger out and set that on the floor there. So, yeah, that was not a strong teacher move to, to do things off camera there and then and, and talk about them. So we're going to relate to, because in Chapter 6, uh, the bio people will, will be familiar with this, but we made a list of words that are, are going to guide us through and associate everything with uh, to things that are going on in chapter 7 and chapter 8. So we're going to go over that list now and where it applies uh, to cellular respiration and uh, uh, A&P people you just write it down and you'll understand we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the connection we'll talk about what they are 
uh, and if in, in class you want to hear more about it just let me know and we can we can chat you about that but give me a new box here and we're gonna put that right there so our first uh, word that we're going to uh, associate with this uh, formula and then I'll get into the formula yeah we're going to go potential okay in chapter 6 I'm just going to put a, a hyphen behind there separating these words in chapter 6 we talked about when molecules are built okay energy is stored within them and we're going to be talking about that energy being released in cellular respiration but right now this energy and we're talking about this energy that's referred to right here it's setting in this glucose molecule okay amongst all this stuff and it's just stored in there and right now it's potential when it gets released it's going to be then kinetic okay and that kinetic energy that's released in the form of ATP which is right there uh, your the cells are going to use that energy that's released that becomes kinetic to do all the things that it needs to uh, cellular division uh, homeostasis processes uh, building proteins building carbohydrates whatever it's got to do even if it's just repair and and uh, who knows maybe it's even fight off viruses or, or bacteria whatever it's got to do it uses that energy uh, to get the job done okay our next word okay with what we're going to talk about is endergonic so indoors so when this process was when the glucose molecule was built that's an inorganic reaction but what we're going to be seeing is an exergonic reaction exergonic means again it's a chemical reaction where energy is being released and that's what's going to happen so the energy that's released is called kinetic energy because it's in motion and it's moving around but the process to get it released that's an exergonic reaction in other words it's a reaction uh, where things were going to happen and energy is released okay our next uh, set of words and of course we're talking about cellular respiration here uh, so we are going to see a lot of, well, let me, let me just do what happened to build it. But here's our old friend, dehydration. Oh, I didn't do that right. I got an extra S in there. Dehydration synthesis. Okay, so when the plants are making the sugar, okay, they are building the molecule. And of course, that occurs with dehydration synthesis a lot. We talked about that a lot in chapter six. We're going to talk about a lot here. Uh, but the one we're going to be seeing is the hydrolysis. Okay, the breaking apart of the molecule, step by step, bit by bit, element by element, uh, hydrolysis, breaking apart, okay, of this molecule. And then our last, and uh, this is another term that A and P students are going to need a little bit more information on uh, because we talked about it in six chapter six, the energy chapter. So the bio people are up to speed here, but we'll have to get you up to speed as well. And I'll do some some pretty cool things, some strong teacher moves to help uh, teach that. But we're talking about reduction. Okay, reduction is simply when an element, or I should say a molecule, receives okay, electron. In other words, hydrogen it's going to be the case, and, but I'll talk more about that. But it, when it receives uh, electrons, okay, which are negative, ne negative particles, we learned about that in Chapter 2, then it's called, it's being reduced. And we're going to refer to that a bunch, and we'll talk about it a bunch, and make sure everybody understands what's going on. It's called a reduction because what's being reduced is its energy level. In other words, if it's a plus one from an ion balance, and you receive an electron, now you're going to be 
a neutral or a zero and if you're a neutral ion and you get an electron now you're a negative one so what's being reduced is its energy level okay it's charge is, is probably a better way of saying it so it isn't so it's a your your molecules being added to by adding a hydrogen which has electrons uh, but your charge is being reduced and that's what's being reduced and in the opposite term the molecule that loses um, the electron that's called oxidation uh, uh, it's being oxidized in other words something is being removed from it electrons are being removed from it and it's called oxidation because a lot of times oxygen is the one that's uh, um, carrying it uh, but not not in this case but that's why it's got that name and together I'm just going to go down here those that reaction the oxidation reduction process is called a redox okay the red for reduction and the ox for oxidation so you're going to see that phrase redox I'll probably say it a few hundred times but that's what we're talking about so again reduction means you've gained an electron okay and your charge is being reduced okay oxidation means you are losing electrons okay it's being cleansed it's being removed it's being taken away so that is the uh, relating it back to the key words that we spent a lot of time on in chapter six okay so closing that so let's get us a little pen here okay we got our rainbow pen as you can see right there and let's break down our formula here and let me make sure I okay I have did number one and related the two and so now let's talk about this so we're talking about this glucose molecule right here okay the plants built it the plants made it and then somehow in some process uh, you know we have got that sugar now it's inside of us okay through the food process and a lot of sometimes we get it directly you know like we'll eat a salad or you know I love me a good tomato on a lot of things uh, whether it's a sandwich or a hamburger and uh, or just you know maybe I ate a salad some lettuce I also put that on hamburgers as well uh, like for example Tuesday night taco salads what we're gonna have and uh, so there'll be some lettuce in there there'll be some tomatoes in there um, there'll be some green onions in there and so all that stuff is going to have those sugars okay but I also can get it indirectly okay when I eat me that hamburger okay the the ground beef the ground chuck whichever we've we've gotten for that situation uh, that the cows uh, obviously we get that from the cows and they obviously are herbivores they've eaten lots of grass and collected lots of sugars in there so whatever process I got that glucose molecule inside of me, my body is now going to uh, break it down. Okay, I'm going to break it down and uh, convert it, change it, and we're going to get some energy from that. We're going to get lots of energy from that, and uh, that's the process that we are talking about. Uh, we're also going to give off some oxygen. Or no, we took in, I'm sorry, we took in some oxygen along with that, which we certainly need. And then we're going to break that down, and then we're going to get rid of the carbon dioxide, which the plants are looking for. Uh, we're going to also give out some water, just breathing out. Uh, it will leave. Uh, but then we're going to get this energy. That's what this entire chapter is about, about the collecting of that energy, and then the cells using it for whatever uh, is needed. And, excuse me. And my nose is itching there, and I didn't want to didn't want to go after scratching it while I was on camera there. So apologize for that. That is not a strong teacher move. Uh, it is having an itchy nose during production. Oh, I like that during production. That's a that just makes it sound pretty cool right there. All right, so let's close out the ink tray and move ourselves down because we've got to introduce more. Uh, people involved in all this and we slide this over okay because we're going to add to our cast here we'll go down here a little bit because uh, um, 
So, uh, no, I don't want to do that because I need, I'm going to do something fancy with this. I need a new box here. Alright, so let me get a, a box here. And let's bring this way over here. All right, electron carriers. Electron carriers. Now, when we say electron carriers, that that name, it uh, that's their that's their purpose. They are they are the ones that are going to be taking the electrons, and of course, it's going to be in the form of H's, the hydrogens. It's what's going to be carried around. And uh, that's where the energy is. Uh, those electrons that are connected to the hydrogens, that's, that's what this whole process is, is all about, which, which you'll see in, in time here. All right, we've got N, A, D, and we're going to put a little plus sign here. That's supposed to be more of an exponent look to it, but uh, the keyboard doesn't do it that way. Not on here. If I was in a Word document, I could convert it, but we're obviously not. And then we're going to go this tab. No, I didn't think it would. So we'll just do space bars. Oh, now I've got something funky going on here. There we go. A little space bar. And F A T. And it also gets a plus sign. Which means, what that would typically mean is it's a plus one. Uh, and so it when we reduce it, Okay, you're going to see the effect of, of that reduction because that plus sign, when we add a hydrogen, it's going to go away. It's going to go from being a plus one to a neutral. Okay, we're going to reduce its charge, um, and that's something that we will stress heavily. Okay, and then down here, let me get another box here. I'm going to put just the letter H. Okay, and I'm going to move that over here. Because essentially, here's what's happening. Okay, here's what's happening. When we go through this process, this hydrogen, okay, that I'm going to use for this example, is going to be connected to the glucose molecule or whatever form that we're into. But what will happen is it was going to be removed from the molecule. It's going to be given, in some cases, to NAD, and it will become NADH. And when that happens, the glucose molecule will be oxidized. In other words, it will be losing the hydrogen. And the NAD will be reduced because it will get the hydrogen. So this is reduced. Okay, and when I take it away, that's oxidized. When I put it here, that's reduced. When I take it away, that's oxidized. So I'm doing this to try to drive home the message of what oxidation and reduction mean, uh, especially for the A and P people who didn't get the benefit of six. So when it's added, that's reduced because we're lowering the charge because we're adding electrons. When I take it away, that's oxidized. Same thing over here. Reduced, oxidized. Reduced, oxidized. Reduced, oxidized. So hopefully that was enough to uh, help understand reduction and oxidized. Reduction, when it gains the electron, the hydrogen, because we're reducing the charge, when it's taken away from wherever it's taken away, that is considered oxidation. So uh, let me mark off number two there on my list here. And, uh, and again, cool teacher move, strong teacher move, uh, taking that H and moving it around and uh, explaining as I go. That was a strong teacher move right there. Okay, so now we're going to move over here. And although it looks like a thumb, it's not a thumb. A little thumbnail there, but that's the mitochondria, the, the left half of a mitochondria. But we're showcasing this. And let me get a little bit bigger here. Um, the locations so when we talk about each of the uh, steps each of the parts of the process of uh, glycolysis, not glycolysis but cellular respiration 
it happens in a different area of the mitochondria. And it's not super important to know where, but it is a possible multiple choice test question. You can, you can certainly understand that. So you would want to know where, it ha where they happen. And there are four parts, and I'll, I'll officially type these up so you can write them down, but you've got glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle, and the o electron transport change hemoosmosis uh, process. And when and each part of it goes deeper or moves across the mitochondria. Glycolysis, which is uh, the first step, it actually happens outside in the uh, cytoplasm of a cell. And then when it's pyruvate oxidation time, we move inside the mitochondria. And then when there's Krebs cycle, we're all the way into the inner membrane and then uh, moving across for the rest of the stuff. So it's basically, it'd be like if you were running errands around town and you go to your first stop, then your second stop, then your third stop, then your fourth stop, and then, then you're done, you go back home. That's the, uh, the process right there. So we just covered the location. So officially I got nine things to talk about and we just done three of them. So doing the math, we are one third of the way done, or we're 33%. So mental math there, that's a strong teacher move right there relating uh, fractions to percentages. All right, so now we're going up here And you may be wondering why I have a picture of Golden Corral and I'm gonna scoot this I'm gonna scoot this over here. Give myself some some room in here because I need to write something down. And then scoot over just a little bit. There. So if you can imagine uh, when this molecule is being uh, disassembled, okay, it's done in small steps and here's why. Okay, think about a firecracker. You know, 4th of July time, uh, New Year's Eve, whatever, firecrackers. When you light that fuse, whether it's just a simple firecracker, an M80, a bottle rocket, whatever, Roman candle, uh, when you light that fuse and move away, when that eventual explosion occurs, a lot of energy is released. And uh, a lot of energy is released. If you were going to try to capture that energy, that'd be pretty challenging. Now, I, I know the Kevin Bacon character in the uh, X-Men movie, uh, he certainly could do it. Um, but the rest of us, not not so much. If you were going to try to collect the energy, it'd be, it'd be difficult. In fact, almost impossible without sophisticated uh, equipment and machinery. Because even if you had it in a container, you know, and it exploded inside there, uh, you wouldn't be able to capture the heat, and once you opened it, and eventually it would just cool down, and so uh, you still wouldn't, you would have contained it, but you wouldn't capture it in order to be able to use it, and that's what your cell is trying to do. It's not so much that it wants to contain it or capture it, it wants to be able to use it. So the process is done in small steps, and that's what this stair, uh, let me get my pen up here, that's what these stair steps are designed to do that in small steps we're going to break down this molecule in other words one hydrogen at a time okay and you can see all these H's that's that's what the the electron tra electron carriers are coming for these hydrogens with those electrons uh, that's what they're coming for and you can see the E's here uh, the hydrogens that's what's going to be carved off of the glucose molecule, those H's, and uh, and it does it in small steps, so it can can have a chance to capture that energy and use it for whatever the cell needs to. Much like and that's what these two pictures are for at Golden Corral, when they bring out the roast beef, okay, and they got that carver there, got his fancy white hat on, his white uh, uh, white coat on and stuff. They don't just take the roast beef and put it on your tray. No, nobody can, well, I guess maybe somebody can eat that much, but certainly not me. Uh, no, they carve it into smaller pieces and one at a time, pass it out, maybe get two slices, I don't know if you asked for it. But it's carved up, okay, in small portions, and those are passed out individually. Okay, metaphorically, that's the same thing your cell's going to do. It's going to carve small pieces, 
okay it's going to carve small pieces it's going to carve this h off and this h okay and this h and that h and this h and this h and that h and that h and that h going to carve it off in small pieces and steps okay one at a time okay one at a time so it can capture because when that when those hydrogens using hydrolysis are broken off okay separated okay then the uh, energy is released okay the stored potential energy is released and your cell is going to contain and capture energy and use it uh, for its day-to-day -day processes so that's what those metaphors are for uh, that's part four right there so let me oh let's just see I think we can do it right here how much room do I got here yeah let's just do it right here we can make this happen all right now for the list the official list of all that's going on here so cellular respiration and let's do let's see do I want to do, do I want a number or do I want to yeah that's a number I often do the slashes to represent outline format but let's just number all right so these are the uh, different processes that occur to get all this glucose broken down but it starts with glycolysis okay and th so that's what starts the process and each one of these we're going to talk about individually so just uh, stay in there and we're going to do two of them today and then the other three next time this will be a two-parter uh, part one part two so part two or no I should say the next step is pyruvate oxidation okay pyruvate oxidation and that will be the second one we talked about today it's kind of a it's a little transitional phase there's not a lot that goes on just a couple little things the rest of these are big long processes you know we're talking 10 steps 8 steps 12 steps but a little pyruvate oxidation it just takes the end product from glycolysis and gives it a little change up a little switcheroo there and then gets it ready for the Krebs cycle, which is number three, the Krebs cycle. Okay, that's number three, and then four. Uh, and I'm going to spell it all this time, but this will be the last time. Uh, electron transport chain. And then from now on, what you're going to see is ETC. So let me slide this over just a bit and get off of that molecule there. So in the end, uh, I should do it like this. This is how we're supposed to do it. This is, how they, this is what they teach you in, uh, in college to do. Yeah, little parentheses, which is a strong teacher move right there. Parentheses to refer to a longer science word. So in the future, uh, I'll be just typing ETC or saying ETC, and that's what I'm talking about, the electron transport chain. And number five, which is kind of a, 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 cool, a cool thing, it's a huge thing, chemoosmosis. Now, uh, this is always an interesting one because when, if you're a high school student, that's what I'm referring to. When I was when I was your age, you know, 16, 17, 18, whatever, and I took biology class way back when. Uh, we didn't we wouldn't have talked about chemoosmosis. It had been electron transport chain. We didn't know about that back in the, those dark ages, 1600s, 16, 1700s, whatever it was. When I was a, in your age, but we, they didn't know about chemoosmosis yet. Okay, they knew what was going on, but they didn't have it separated or fully fully broken down into what's going on but now chemoosmosis is a we're well familiar with that and uh, so we can add that to our discussion but it's kind of the, the very end okay it's the big it's the big energy explosion as far as uh, collection and uh, and uh, getting that energy so that ours is the steps to get all this done and that is number five on our list so we are fast approaching 
uh, the end here. So I think we're supposed to go down here. Yep, there's my stuff right there. And I'm going to have to go back out a little bit. One. Wait, am I supposed to? Yeah, I'm supposed to bring this down for a later talk. So let me go ahead and grab that now. And I'll put it here for right now. But then we'll continue to go down. And I'm officially going to put it right there. And let me do this while I'm thinking about it because I don't need all those lines. Oh, you know what? They're fine. But we don't need to look at it right now. Alright, so here we're talking about part one, glycolysis. So now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of, of, what's, of what's going on. So let me get my... title right there, glycolysis, get you some information here, so now I will do my outline format right there. Uh, first thing we want to remember is that occurs in the cytoplasm, okay, and we referred to that earlier, but again, it's right here, it's outside of, okay, the mitochondria, it is not in there yet. And what it does converts glucose to pyruvate. Okay, it converts glucose to pyruvate. That's what we got going on in uh, in for this step. Our next note: it is a ten-step process. And, and certainly by no means do we have to know all the 10 steps. Uh, when we get into the Krebs cycle, we do break down each of the steps uh, because it's a pretty cool process. But here, uh, we just, we're going to focus on mostly just end products. Since this is just part one of a huge, long ordeal, um, we don't need to know all that stuff just yet. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go down here one. Because now we're going to talk about the end products. In other words, what do we get out of this um, this process? So, outline format there for you. Uh, we're going to get two pyruvates. And uh, don't worry, I will be breaking down uh, everything that does happen. Uh, let me just get all this background information out of the way and our next end product is we're going to get four ATP but we're going to net two ATP and that's important to understand uh, but I'll talk about what that means and why how it happens and, and uh, and uh, what occurred so just right now it's just a note but we will break it down and talk about it and we're going to get two NADHs and uh, again just saying I can't say it enough it's got the H okay which means it's been reduced okay which means the glucose molecule is oxidized and you can kind of see it right there but we will talk about it uh, the NAD molecule was reduced when it added the H. The glucose molecule was oxidized. Okay, those things always happen in tandems. Okay, if something gets oxidized, something is getting reduced. The H's are not just removed and they're free floating. Okay, there's it is a purpose, purposeful act, purposeful reaction. Okay, and we're going to hear just one more because I got one more thing to say here. Now, the NADHs, okay, uh, those NAD molecules have to be reused. Okay, and so in other words, think about um, you've got a friend that comes over and helps you move, or just you're moving yourself and uh, you're just using pickup trucks. Okay, so the NADs, you can think of them as a pickup truck. All right, they come up to your house, you throw all the boxes in the back. And then it takes it to the new house or the, the next house 
and unloads and then comes back to get more. So that's what the NADs and the FADs are doing. They're arriving, picking up the load, taking it to the drop-off spot, which is the ETC, electron transport chain, and then they come back and get some more. Okay, so it's that con it's that continual process of picking up, unloading, coming back, okay, getting some more, going back. Oh, excuse me, and uh, and uh, just that continual process of back and forth, picking up, unloading, and when they pick up, they're reduced. When they unload, they're oxidized. They pick up, they're reduced. They unload, they're oxidized. Okay, so we can close that out. And now, let's come over here and let's actually, we're going to move up so we can see this glucose molecule. Yeah, we did all that. And we're going to come all the way over to here. Going to get our pin out. So let's highlight what's going on. Okay, first thing we got to talk about is the start. Okay, so we've got a glucose molecule. So the first thing that happens is our cell takes two of the pre of the treasured ATP molecules. Okay, those the energy uh, energy molecules, and it spins it. Okay, uses them to provide the energy. In other words, you can see this one has a T, so that's triphosphate. This one has a D, diphosphate. Three, two. Okay, in other words, a phosphate was removed. And any time that you move an element from a molecule, energy is released. Okay, that energy is used then to start this process, start the conversion of uh, glucose. So we invest some energy into the process. Okay, and so that energy is used to convert glucose. As you can see there, the fructose diphosphate. Uh, and it's called diphosphate because guess where those phosphates went? The, yeah, the phosphates that were taken off, guess where they went? Yeah, they went to the glucose molecule. So you can look at the ATP was oxidized and the glucose molecule reduced because those phosphates are going to have electrons. Okay. So investment stage. Uh, we invest some energy right off the bat and that's the only time that we actually spend some of our own money to uh, uh, in this process. All the rest of the time uh, we gain. Okay, We gain from that and you can see right down here uh, where that happens okay so then the next step is then we get to right here okay and something pretty cool happens that glucose molecule is split and when we say split if you can think about it uh, in this manner it's it'd be more like through here to get a good um, get a symmetrical values on each side but that's essentially what happens okay you've got this uh, molecule and it's split into two okay and each side gets three carbons so if you think about if I have a carbon well, I'm just going to draw them all and then we will so there's four five six and of course, it'll have all the oxygens and hydrogens as well, but I'm not drawing those. And then it just cuts it in half. And then I have now two three carbon molecules. Okay? So three carbon molecules, two of them. And they're called pyruvic acid. And that you can see uh, right here. Okay. But some of those 10 steps along the way is, and you can see here, okay, when we were talking about earlier that each of those hydrogens are taken off, you know, one at a time, 
okay here's a situation where one of these hydrogens okay is carved off and uh, added to the NAD molecule and when that happens the glucose molecule is oxidized in other words it has lost the electrons and the NAD molecule is reduced because it gained the electrons so I can't say those two words enough oxidation and reduction trying to help you to grasp that uh, mental concept and over here as well okay another one of these H's uh, is taken off the glucose molecule so oxidized and the NAD molecule gains it so it's reduced oxidized when it lost the electrons reduced when it gained the electrons okay and another part of the process is we take those uh, we take that uh, those phosphates back that we gave up here and when we do that same thing here when we do these when we take things off okay in here as well when we take elements off the molecule okay energy is released okay every time I can't say that enough and you gotta you gotta just tuck that away and, to, and recognize that every time an element is removed from the molecule okay energy is released okay not every once in a while not sometimes every time okay every time and it takes a little bit of energy to add it okay but when it's released you get a whole bunch more and this is the metaphor that I talked about in uh, chapter 6 the energy uh, that the bio people are going to be familiar with uh, but the A and P people, you'll be hearing it for the for the first time. Uh, well, except Trayton Rainey, Trayton Rainey, I know you're out there somewhere. Uh, you've heard this because you sat through the dual credit class last year. So Trayton will be that one person. Let me think about that. Is that right? No, Megan. No wait, she's a nurse. I never subscribe to that. Yeah, Trayton Rainey, you're that one person. So so think think us. Uh, Oh, we just had a big, uh, big uh, uh, grind there. So hopefully uh, everything's all right. My red light's still on, so we should be good there. Uh, so you, you take a dollar and you put it into a machine, and that machine gives you back five dollars. So I know trading out there. I know you remember that metaphor. We say it a bunch of times in class because we got so much time to 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 fill. Uh, you take a dollar, you put it in the machine, and the machine gives you five dollars back. Hey, we would all do that. I know I would do that. We wouldn't go to work. We wouldn't uh, we wouldn't go to the store. We would simply go to that machine and put a dollar in and get five back, and then take one of those dollars and put it back in the machine and get five dollars back. That's what your cells are doing. Okay. When they add, when they put a molecule together, it takes a little bit of energy. But when it's released or taken off, a bunch of energy is released. Okay, and so it invests a little and gets a big return. Okay, a big return. So that's what's going on here with your cells. That's what your cells are doing. They're investing a little bit, a dollar. Okay. And then when they take it off, they're getting a bunch back, the $5 metaphor. So that's what's going on here. And so that is part 7 and part 8 are related to the metaphor. Uh, but again, that metaphor, the oxidation reduction. Hey, A&P people, uh, well, if you're the high school version, we got plenty of time. We'll talk about it uh, way too much, I'm sure. But... Uh, uh, NP at Crowder, it's just a couple of classes. So if you need more on oxidation reduction, hey, say something, and uh, I will I will coach you up on that on that all you want. So that's glycolysis, okay? The beginning of the process of breaking down glucose uh, and the separation of the two of the big molecule and the two small ones. So what? Oh, so you got to remember that uh, while this is going on, it's happening twice okay on this strand and this strand so everything um, 
that uh, is happening on this side. It's also going over here. And oh, and one last thing, the uh, net ATP. So we, you can see that we gain four ATP molecules are made. But remember that we spent two up here. So that's where that net two it comes from. We make a total of four, but we spent two. So it's a net two. I mean, that's an accounting term. Um, you know, just like your net pay is different than your gross pay. So uh, there we go. So that is uh, part six, seven, and eight. And so now we're down to our final uh, topic. And I think I got to go all the way up here to the top is where I stuck those pictures at. Yeah, matter of fact, it's right there. Uh, so I just need to simply move that over. Oh, I brought the, I dragged the, the box of the five over there and I put that back. There we go. All right, let me give myself a little bit more room here. And a little text box. So now we're talking about pyruvate oxidation. And this is our final topic. So the name alone oxidation that tells you what's going to happen here okay right away you should be thinking okay the pyruvate is about to lose some stuff okay and that's exactly uh, what happens okay so just some notes on this occurs in the mitochondria okay you can see now we've moved inside glycolysis outside. Pyruvate oxidation is now inside uh, the mitochondria. And our next uh, note, it starts starts with two pyruvates, uh, but the the interesting thing about this is uh, each pyruvate, oxid, pyruvate acid or pyric acid uh, goes through this process, but they're not in tandem. I mean, they're not tied together. They're not connected together. Uh, they just each go through this process, but there are two pyruvates, uh, if you remember, from glycolysis. Uh, where am I here? Oh, okay. Each... Each is oxidized, meaning they're going to lose, and you can see that this happens right there. Okay, we're carving off another H, uh, which means uh, we are gaining more energy. Okay, we are gaining more energy. And where this process is really fascinating, and I, I meant to say this earlier, but just think about who built this glucose molecule. Okay. The plants did. So we didn't do anything other than just eat to get this sugar. So all of this energy that we're, we're gaining, okay, we didn't, we didn't spend to make. Okay, we spent a little bit to get the process started. But all this energy we get, it's essentially free because we don't, we don't build the molecule. We didn't put the energy and we didn't use the energy to build it. The plants did that. So it's just, it's just a cool process to, to think about that you can eat and what you enjoy. Oh, I, I know I enjoy eating, and, uh, uh, especially if it's something that we make around here, which is usually pretty good stuff. Uh, but it's just free, okay? You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't do the work to build the sugar molecule, but you're receiving lots of energy uh, from it. Each is oxidized, then... Then converted, uh, okay, and that's the process we're going to be talking about today. And the last thing to say, uh, we we're going to reduce the NAD plus 
thing. And again, I can't say it enough, and we sat in the class a bunch, especially the high school side, because we were there uh, uh, so much every day or daily that uh, when it receives that H, it's a reduction of its charge. And uh, so the pyruvate is oxidized, NAD is reduced. That redux process, you just can't, you just can't say enough uh, to make sure. So uh, that's the notes right there on nine, which is our last part. So we'll talk about this and then we will be done. Get my pen here. And again, we're in the mitochondria. Uh, but what's going on here, you got the pyruvate, which comes from glycolysis. And the, the cool thing here, again, you can see we carve off a carbon dioxide. So there's energy from that. Okay, we carve off an H. Okay, so we're oxidized, oxidized. Um, and that H, again, it, it is taken to the ETC. And I'll just do this since we're at the end here. I don't need this space. If I do, I will move things around for next time. But we're going to ETC, so this whole process is getting us there. And we talked about that. I, mean, I love talking to me some ET ETC. But you can see what happens uh, to it. So this has happened, and now we're here to this stage right here. Okay, and then something pretty cool happens uh, that it's converted into acetyl CoA. Coenzyme A, and that's what it—that's the word you'll see when we talk about the Krebs cycle. That's what enters the Krebs cycle. But in it, but it's this bad boy right here. That's an enzyme. Okay, that enzyme is added to the molecule. Okay, so it's a protein. Okay, but it's there to do a job, and that job shows up in the Krebs cycle. It gets the process started in the Krebs cycle. Uh, but that's just the cool part about what your body, your cells can do. I mean, adding an enzyme to a molecule um, so it can get so it can do some work on it during the Krebs cycle. I mean, that's phenomenal because if you just think about how does the cell know to do that? Because there's a gene on your DNA that tells it to. I mean, that is just phenomenal that there isn't this boss man, okay? That's say, hey, you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that. You know, it's not like there's a supervisor, nothing in charge. The cells just know what to do. I mean, I mean, I, I guess deep down, I just hope you can appreciate the magnitude and the depth uh, of that. Uh, you know, however you believe that we're here and, and whatever else, that that's not important. Uh, I mean, it is individually to you, but not to this. But it's not so important that we're saying one thing or another thing. Uh, but just the fact that they know what to do, I mean, that is unbelievable. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I coached for a lot of years, and, you know, the amount of effort it takes to get a team to do the same thing with the same purpose and the same goal and direction, I mean, that's challenging, but yet the sales, man, they just know what to do. But, and I'm starting to say it a bunch of times now, so I, that's my cue to uh, tap myself in the leg and say, hey, that's enough. That's enough time of saying it. But anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Your uh, look at cellular respiration. And, man, just incredible, incredible stuff. So I know it's work that you got to do to get it all written down and to memorize and, and to everything. Uh, but just hope you can appreciate uh, the incredibleness that, that your cells and that your that they do to make you, make you an efficient uh, machine. Because uh, in a essence, I mean, I know we're a lot more than that, but uh, kind of what we are. But hey, thank you. Uh, again, enjoy the rest of your day or evening, whatever whatever it is that you're watching this. Uh, hopefully, uh, you appreciate this, enjoyed this, and uh, again, again, hope that you're in good shape, uh, everything, and your family's in good. Uh, in a good way, in a good manner, and uh, and with that, uh, but it is kind of sentimental because I know that what, you know, once you guys watch, start watching this video, we are super close to the end, and I know Christmas break uh, once we've once Crowder has ended, uh, I'm sure going to miss those two groups. Uh, love those classes out there, and of course high school we're halfway, 
uh, but this will be at the end so we're talking April for you guys so I know it's going to be closer to the end uh, which kind of gets me all sentimental all misty eyed all warm and fuzzy on the inside and, but anyway thank you and until next time we will say goodbye <laughs>